Hello, this is Shesha Chalam from Ashwagad, Mysore. Today let us discuss about sun and different manifestations of the presence of sun in the chart. The main point when sun is spoken about is it is a huge big fireball and everybody knows it. And that is why the Adi Devata of Sun is, uh, and Adi Devata and Pratej Devata of Sun is Agni and Rudra. So, uh, the uh, first Sukta, first Sukta is the first stanza or the first mantras of all the four major Vedas. That is the Rig Veda, Ejur Veda, Atharvana Veda, Sama Veda, and Atharvana Veda are all, you know, salutations to. Agni or in reality to the sun god. So here it is said that sun far away is represented by fire on earth. So <clears throat> you glow, go close to the fire, what happens? You get burnt. The same way combustion happens when planets go very close to sun. So let us understand in reality because there are many theories as to the degree of combustion. People, Some people keep 10 degrees, some people keep 7, some people take 15 degrees from sun and if I take 15 degrees from sun then either part, side of the sun, one full Rashi, no planet should be there with sun. So then, uh, then how come any yogas happen with sun? Then what is Buddha Yoga if it is very far away from sun? So let us now understand these things, uh, particularly uh, combustion. This is my personal understanding and I have done a lot of study with regard to, lot of study with regard to my limitations. So please try to understand that if I tell a lot of study that doesn't mean that I have a lack of charts and I have done uh, one lakh charts or something like that. No, I have done somewhere like around thousands of charts, let's say around four to five thousands of charts. So when I have seen them, I have understood the manifestations of how actually sun is, you know, mixing with along with planets and how actually it's giving results to, you know, what results are coming out. So because Venus and Mercury are too close to sun and always close to sun. So it is, we all know that Mercury cannot be 28 degrees away from sun astronomically because that is the angle uh, from earth. So if this is sun, so 28 degrees on either side, mercury will be somewhere in between only. So that means maximum one Rashi difference only. Or it is in the 12th, first or the second from sun. It cannot be away from that because each Rashi is around 30 degrees. So Venus is around 48 degrees from sun on either side. This side 48, that side 48. So that can be two Rashis. So that is uh, 18, 30 and 0. So that means it's somewhere in between two Rashis. So sun from, third from sun or 11th from sun or 12th from sun with sun, second or third. So that is how Venus can be. So when the hottest planet in the solar system other than sun is Venus. So we know that it's made of a bright, uh, it's a, it gives out bright light and that's why we uh, assign the diamond to Venus, uh, the uh, other hottest planet on uh, in the solar system other than sun is Mercury. So these two planets are used to the heat of sun. So let us understand scientifically that these two cannot easily get combust because their nature itself is hot. They are active, they are bouncing. We usually, uh, you know, uh, understand these two planets as very very fast active on their toes and in our native tongue we keep telling that it's as good as you put hot water on a hot plate of uh, iron you know in, in our south india we do dosa and when we do dosa we have a hot iron plate and you know before doing the dosa to control the heat on the upper surface he takes a little bit of water the cook takes a little bit of water and you know sprinkles it on it and you can see those bubbles bouncing and dancing over the, uh, you know, hot plate. We call this speed as the Mercury. This speed as Venus. 
when they are already in such close relationship with son please do not take for, you know too much of degrees for combustion so my limitation of combustion to mercury is 3 degrees and even within 3 degrees it does not lose 100% of its results no it will only lose around 50% of its results so when a planet is fully combusted this is my my uh, way of uh, analysis please do not take it as a textbook uh, textbook analysis because textbook has says something else so 3 degrees for mercury more than 3 degrees mercury is fine it starts forming yoga with sun so venus it is 5 degrees for venus um, if i am teaching i teach 5 degrees for venus on either side so more than 5 degrees venus also starts forming yoga with sun you know there is relationship with sun because the orb of influence of venus is 7 degrees the orb of influence of sun is 15 degrees and they they are placed within uh, just 5 degrees and above the both the orbs are engulfing both the planets so they form beautiful yogas so 3 degrees to mercury 5 degrees to venus and rest of the planets i take it as 7 degrees 7 degrees and within 7 degrees they start you know feeling the heat of the sun so again here there are many confusions which have to be clarified what if the planet is retrograde retrograde because your normal normal planet means if this is earth i am earth this is sun then this is venus on the other side so what actually happens if it is a normal planet if the combustion happens that means the rays of venus are totally sucked up by earth nothing is coming this side so what if a retrograde venus is there that means it is in between me and sun so if this is sun and i am earth and this is venus so it is between me and sun that means i can see a part of venus i can see a part of venus the other part of venus is still giving me its rays so that is why the inner planets i am only talking about the inner planets uh, venus and mercury now i'll come to the uh, external planets like mars jupiter and saturn so first the inner planets so when it is retrograde both mercury and venus gain chesta bala which actually increases the strength of these planets though it is combust it will still have that is the retention strength will it will be retained that strength will be there with it and that strength which is present in the planet will be very good and it will be effective whether it is good or bad that is different now we are talking about whether a planet is losing strength or gaining strength this is not about malefic or benefic so please think that uh, it is very important so so what happens when planets get combust this i will teach uh, from today i'll be adding on this particular series of all these five planets when they get combust what happens including the amavasya of sun and moon so now retrograde planets for external planets like uh, mars what actually is happening if i am earth this is sun so mars is behind me mars is behind me and then if it is retrograde how can it be combust it cannot be it has to be behind it always so that means if i am earth my perspective is that i see sun behind the you know zodiac the zodiac is there here the screen is the zodiac so if there is uttara bhadrapada nakshatra sun is in uttara bhadrapada nakshatra and if saturn is retro that means it is behind me it is in the opposite uh, zodiac sign so uttara bhadrapada nakshatra is in mean rashi if it is opposite then saturn will be in kanya rashi so if the external planets are retrograde that means they can never be combust so that, those things you should understand so if if a planet is behind it only then it sucks up its power so being combust it takes away the natural significations of the planet mixes it with its own signification and starts giving a new you know uh, result or new influence over the native so these influences for each planet i'll be discussing in the coming classes so the next question is do planets 
form yogas with sun then how and when so 100% sure we have buddha aditya yoga solar yogas are there we have buddha aditya yogas we have surya mangala yogas we have guru and uh, surya yogas that is brahaspati and ravi yogas beautiful yogas are there which actually gives rise to strong raja yogas like these are very good three yogas which i told you one with buddha one with uh, mangal that is uh, mars buddha is mercury mars and jupiter when sun is posited close to these three but not so close that they get combust then they form yogas these yogas are known as raja yogas they give kingly status they give excellent results comfort they give social status they give fame you know recognition identity these are the things which actually people crave for when a planet is associated with sun that particular planet will become brighter and brighter and it starts giving you very good results but if it's not combust so does these yogas really manifest surely they will manifest depending on where they are posited these yogas will surely manifest and start giving you fantastic results so like there are yogas like lakshmi narayana yoga so what is lakshmi narayana yoga is let us say sun is the kendra sthana adhipati kendra sthana adhipati means it is the lord of the quadrant so let us say sun is either the first fourth seventh or tenth lord and it is sitting along with the fifth or the ninth lord let us say it is sitting along with the fifth or the ninth lord it gives rise to lakshmi narayana yoga when the kendra and the trikona both mix up this gives prosperity and also fame this gives wealth and also recognition fame in the society it gives respect in the society it makes a person a personality in the society and a person will gain a lot of weightage in the society so this is a beautiful yoga so lakshmi narayana yoga with the sun okay and this can happen beautifully particularly particularly if sun is placed in the kendra and it also warms because it's a male planet if it is associated with a female planet and if sun owns the kendra and the female planet owns the trikona then you get a different type of combination where the person will be egoistic will have the uh, will be having a pompous extravaganza he likes things big he can't take it small he wants everything big big lifestyle big cars big industry lot of money hard work that is because sun is the kendra sthana adhipati a male planet owning the kendra and the female planet owning the trikona so uh, i can give you one example of uh, sun and mercury though mercury is a eunuch but i'll still tell that it owns the female rashi kanya so uh, and the sun owns the male rashi uh, leo and for particularly uh, for uh, um, taurus ascendant it becomes the kendra and the trikona so it's a beautiful combination for taurus that buddha aditya yoga so it gives rise to lakshmi narayana yoga also the reverse also is very extraordinary yogas will be given like if the sun uh, owns a female house female house is a even house uh, and uh, uh, is associated with a male planet of a male house let us say it's an odd house so this also happens like for example uh, again if i take uh, aries ascendant aries ascendant then again you will get this as a male mm, let me calculate yeah mm. okay if i take taurus once again taurus just uh, for uh, sake of calculation uh, you get not taurus let me go to cancer if i take cancer you get um, leo as an even house and sun becomes the lord of the even house and jupiter gets the uh, ninth house so it becomes lord of the male house and it's a male planet 
so jupiter and sun uh, once again gives rise to a very strong raja yoga in this particular chart if the dhanasthana adhipati is a uh, sun which owns the female ra uh, rashi now because that rashi is the second house it's an even house it becomes the female house and then uh, brahaspati who is a male but usually a very soft and a docile male takes the control and becomes the dominant male because it is the ninth house so it takes the role to play so sun helps jupiter to formulate the life that is to give more influence to the native it through jupiter it channelizes its power so these things uh, it's it's a little difficult for us to suddenly understand these things but it's a beautiful subject altogether so uh in in only two cases dharma karma adhipati yoga happens dharma karma adhipati means the ninth lord the dharma 10th lord the karma so ninth and 10th lord in sun along with sun happens with moon or mercury that is if sun is the ninth lord then mercury will be the 10th lord uh, uh, for particularly for uh, sagittarius and uh, the buddha aditya yoga for sagittarius is also dharma karma adhipati yoga and also lakshmi narayana yoga because buddha is also the 7th lord gives rise to good business fantastic yoga for fame and uh, brilliance brilliant yoga the person will be extraordinarily intelligent anyway we have to see the lagna and its strength but let us keep everything aside and think that everything is fine and then take this yoga so the other dharma karma adhipati yoga is an amavasya that is it's not always amavasya it can also be the prathami or the dvitiya or even the trayodashi or the chaturdashi so the, uh, not trayodashi i think chaturdashi uh, pournami or uh, sorry chaturdashi amavasya and padya that is prathami um, when moon is behind sun and in front of sun or with sun this gives rise to dharma karma adhipati yoga and this is for particularly for scorpio ascendant which is a fantastic yoga people who are leaders are born with this particular yoga that is why scorpio is a dark very dark rashi very secretive rashi and if they get a dharma karma adhipati yoga with moon and sun and well placed let us say it is placed in the 10th house uh, in leo it's one of the best yogas for a leader to be born so people who are having this particular talk was to clarify the topic of combustion as to how to treat combustion and what happens and how to mathematically calculate this so in the forthcoming videos i will be doing uh, in particular i'll be talking about each planet when it get combust what will be the results so thank you very much for today's class